साधु 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 नमो तस भगवत अर् सम्मुद्ध स नमो तस भगवत अर्हत सम्मुद्ध स नमो तस भगवत अर्हत सम्मुद्ध स होमेश टू द ब्लसड वन द वर्ल वन the supremely enlightened one sadhu 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 let's worship to our teacher by who present we are able to study and learn the dhamma sadhu sadhu Sadhu. Dear meritorious Dhamma friends, uh, today we're going to learn what is a ready retreat and what are, what are the benefits for us as a monk also and as a lady what is too. We're going to learn the both prospects of it. In Buddha's time, there was a one monk. who was master in practicing loving kindness meditation and one day uh, one time when he was uh, asked to stay in the rent retreat for that village so the village people came together and they built a one beautiful hut for him close to the forest okay a little bit outside from city outside from village and close to the forest so what this monk did whenever whatever he needed from the society or he goes to the uh, town or village and rest of the time he practice meditation in his room or his hut and his masters he was practicing continuously of loving kindness meditation so this 3 months of rainy retreat finished and what happened when he started to leave the people were already interested that bunte should stay here because they have they had a marvelous time of this rent retreat to associate the bunte but with them also there were couple of other people who was looking different who was wearing different clothes so some were the deities from the forest and some were yakkas so so devils from the forest so these uh, two different kind of people gathered together and they came to the this bante and asked bante since the bante has arrived in this forest we feel the peace in the first time in our life because we are the people are totally opposite nature and whenever we see each other there are always the clashes arise in, in between us we always spend our time to fighting with each other there is no particular reason but whatever the smallest thing is there we fight for each other but since the bante has arrived here we haven't fought any war in between us there was no quarrel we feel the peace in this forest so be kind for us and stay for another year so the bante does not have any tent so what he did he said okay he accept the, the uh rainy retreat for the next year entirely and he stayed there whole year then the another rainy retreat has came and he pa- that passed away and this bante was staying there still so every year before the vasana before the rainy retreat these people came even they have uh, the, the the tree gods and the demons also and they invite him to stay and the next when the rainy retreat is finished they invite it to him it mentioned in the dhamma that he spent his entire life more than 27 years in that forest rest of his life 
up until he passed away they did not give him a chance to move so association of monk who is practicing the dhamma with the diligence and with the loving kindness meditation the effect of it that manusanam piyo hoti amanusanam piyo hoti and devata rakhanti these three benefits what the loving kindness meditation was giving this bante had himself and the result of it the beings who were surrounded out of him they were having it so the story mentioned in the rainy retreat when the bante is practicing the dhamma that whatever the dhamma is practicing it is beneficial for all the beings who are surrounded in us so that is one of the advantage so in that time that we can also practice the loving kindness meditation and we can be participate of that okay we can take the advantage of this loving kindness meditation dear them friends now uh, in this full moon day we will going to celebrate the establishment of sangha in the first uh full moon day means a uh, besak the supreme buddha attained it enlightenment and after 57 weeks spending time seven weeks of time he spent in the, under the bodhi tree and then decided to ask dhamma to people then he traveled to it isipatana migadaya it means the the sanctuary of deers where the all the saints or rishis were dwelling in that site it is in sarnath now these days close to varanasi and when the buddha traveled he established the sangha his first dhamma talk was dhamma chakka pavatan sutta means the turning of dhamma chakra no so establishment of sangha happened in that day when the buddha explains that there is suffering there is a cause for suffering there is a cessation of suffering and the path leads to cessation of suffering when the supreme for the first time he explained to the people or the five monks who were there only one of them was able to fully understand it i think you all know what is his name hmm kaundan what was his name bante kaundan and what happened because he was the first person to understand and realized they call him anya kaundan the kaundan who has realized it who has seen this fact and other four months they were delighted what the supreme buddha explains because they haven't heard these things before it was the first time that someone truly gave the path to escape from suffering and that is a unique thing that um, happened so even they haven't realized it they delighted in it and what they did bante we like to be your disciples and all the five monks five ascetics they became a monk the first monk so that was the sangha first time created in the supreme buddha's dispensation after the supreme buddha's enlightenment this is the first rainy retreat the supreme buddha has done and these five monks were there in the same time within a couple of days what the buddha did each and every person supreme buddha express explain this four noble truths to all the rest of four months and when they understand what is the noble truths are what is the eightfold path is 
and how to practice that eightfold path in their life they understand that now this five months needed only the last dharma talk to understand the essence of life and when this five all the monks with the kaundanya bhante everyone attained the first fruit of dharma the srota panna supreme buddha gather them all again and he delivered the second dharma talk especially the dharma talk of call anatta lakshana sutta non self you know that i am not there it is not me it's not mine it is not myself so the non self dhamma supreme buddha expressed there anatta lakshana sutta once the supreme buddha expressed that dhamma all the five monks attained the fruits of nibbana they realized what the buddha expressed and why they came to the supreme buddha why they became a disciple they fulfilled their purpose of it and what happened this thing happened when the rainy retreat was the rainy season was continuing later on within a couple of days later there was a one uh, very wealthy rich person called yash and he also went outside to seek for the refuge and when the supreme buddha he, he found the supreme buddha he went to him as dhamma and he became sotapanna when his friends understand that ma our, our friend yash has left house and became a monk so definitely this, and if he has to the path to be a ascetic to spend ascetic life or become a monk then definitely is it worth for us to join him and what they did they also they also participated they also became a monk so when this one vasana the these three months of rainy retreats happened on that time when it is done 61 and large and monk were there how many monks 61 monks were there because before the buddha there is no sangha there is no sangha before the buddha there are different different groups of people but the fully enlightened people you will never find in this world only the supreme buddha's dhamma brings that so what happened this 61 monk means 60 of the other disciple and one supreme buddha when that happened supreme buddha gave them the dhamma talk he said charat bhikkhave charikam because travel to different different region of this country bahujana hitai your travel should be benefit for many people bahujana sukhai for happiness for many people they say the bhikkave dhamma and this traveling what should you do to preach the dhamma teach the dhamma to the people adi kalyanam which is good in the beginning adi kalyanam which does the marvelous job if someone has just started to understand it madhya kalyanam middle of this dhamma is also beautiful madhya kalyanam pariyosana kalyanam at the end of this dhamma it is also marvelous to see for whom so many people of the society for their happiness and for their well being supreme buddha gave this dhamma talk go because and preach the dhamma to all the people satang sabbenjanam kevalam paripurna brahmacharyam prakasate so this dhamma is complete of itself with all the similes with all the good things what is, what is there to express what is there what is the important what is the each and every aspect to attain the enlightenment 
everything is there. So this is for the complete Brahmacharya to complete your holy life, complete the enlightenment. This Dhamma is there. So go and preach this. So these 60 monk, 61 monk or with the Supreme Buddha, they travel in the, all the directions. And what they did? They taught the Dhamma to everyone. What happened? There was no precepts on that time. So these big codes, when they go to the different, different region, when they preach the Dhamma, they cannot make anyone be yet. So what they do? They bring this person who wanted to become a monk to the Supreme Buddha. And then Supreme Buddha, looking at that person, seeing, he give them the monkhood. A hibikave or to triple gem refuge. So that way the Sangha started to expand. The next twenty retreat, there was a couple of, uh, what it called, Gaya Kashyap, Nadi Kashyap and Uruvela Kashyap. These three brothers, they became the Supreme Buddha's disciple. You have, you have heard that stories in the Vinaya also, in the Diginika also. They are expressed beautifully. Supreme Buddha shows there are countless of psychic powers on that time. More than 3,000 psychic powers were shown on that time. And later on, when they understand, okay, the Buddha is better than me, and he is truly enlightened. This Uruvela Kashyap left his, uh, uh, all the hairs, he cut down his hairs, throw all the uh, instrument for what is used for, for uh, the fire ceremony or the yagas, and then he became the monk. And followed by his disciples, the Nadi Kashyap and Gaya Kashyap also, they also became his disciples, Supreme Buddha's disciple. So there was more than a uh, thousand monks were there. And that year, Supreme Buddha spent in that house. So we can see wherever the Supreme Buddha dwelt for rainy retreat, the monks started to attain the enlightenment. Because what happens in rainy retreat? This is the one time that monks has to stay in a one particular uh, place for continuous of three months. And this is the only time that bhantes get to practice or the continuous on one particular object or they continue to do the meditation and the, they can strive on the path of enlightenment because they have the three months to spend in one time. Neither they are traveling from town to town, village to village, preaching them or just traveling as a wanderer all over the country. But these three months they spend one, one place. And that also did not happen at once. In the first Vasana, in the first Rendi retreat, there was no precept that they can stay in one place. But the Buddhas did, he spent one time. Uh, he stayed in one place, but the other monks, they were traveling. So what happened? The people started to say these words. Oh, see, when the rain has, when the rain, rain time is there, all the birds and animal also finds the shelter to spend the time. But Shakya Putra Shraman, the Supreme Buddha's disciple, are the different from them. They are still traveling in this rainy trying. You know, like in winter, if someone is traveling here and there, how we will feel? We will ask them, we will say that this person is crazy. He should find the shelter, you know, it's because there we don't know what the... Uh, what kind of, a storm will come and how much snow will fall there, we don't know. So we always expect if someone is struck in there, they should find a shelter in that time. Same goes for in India as rain retreat. There are a couple of days, 24-7, even some of the time, the months is there, there is water is pouring, you know, all time, continuous rain is there, six days, seven days. So there are small, small insects and it is very difficult for bhikkhus 
to go for arms round that happened so these people started to say oh see that these bhikkhus are traveling they the but, but the other animals they find shelter so the supreme buddha explains anudanami bhikkave vassana kala so you can observe this vassana kala stay in one place as buddha advised to the bhikkhus from that time all the monks started to spend three months of time in the one particular place one particular vihara or in the one chamber in that time when the buddha explains express this the monks got a time to really really practice and strive for the path of enlightenment usually when you are traveling most of time you spend a most of time to the go for the arms round when you come back you take care of your place where you are staying and if you are traveling to some different place then you have to take gather all the goods from the temple and you have to make it proper and you have to leave so when you are traveling your fatigue is there you know the body pain and you have to take a little bit rest also in that way you don't find the much time to practice meditation or think of dhamma if you are traveling a lot but in the rainy retreat when you are staying in one particular space that you can do that so the monks took advantage of it what they did before this rain began they visited the supreme buddha and they asked in bante this direction we like to spend this vasana kala or they go and mention to the buddha bante last time in the summer time this people from that village invited me to spend this vasana the rainy retreat in our village and what that happened this bante when he was worship the supreme buddha supreme buddha gave him the particular task okay bhikkhu spend this three month by practicing this meditation spend this three month by practicing this kind of deed so this monk has a task for this three months and when he goes to that particular place what he does he spend this whole entire time there and when this three month is finished he attain the fully fruits of enlightenment after the rainy retreat they visit back to the supreme buddha and express bante what the supreme buddha has mentioned we have practiced this thing and now we came to share the merit with supreme buddha so that was a routine for them what the monk uh, what the people then started to take from it they got the chance to invite bhikkhus to their village like if within a couple of days you will go to the temple all the there is a one ceremony will there the, all the devotees will gather and they will do one thing what they will do they will give them call vassana robe we call the satika vassana satika it is a similar to the inner robe okay but there is no stitches in in that it's just a plain robe it is for taking bath in rainy time for beginning of that it is it has also a beautiful story what is it one day when the supreme buddha was dwelling uh, in the uh, saavati that time a uh, huge cloud has gathered all over the country and the buddha saw that this cloud is very cloud is very rare and it, the rain is going to begin so he asked to all the monks because go and take a bath in this rain so on that time monks only had a three robes like one they are wearing up one is inner robe and one is for the sangati you know the one one robe that they keep the monks on the shoulder so these three robes they were keeping 
but for the wash for the uh, for going outside or um, for the bath they did not have any particular robe so these all the monks thousand of kind of close to thousand monks they were all naked and they were taking a shower in the rain because huge rain was there and when the when the rain we started a little bit mild that time the dana was of the vishakas dana so she invited uh, she sent one uh, uh, dasi one servant to the temple and asked her uh, tell her go and invite the bhikkhus for the lunch or for the food ask them to come so this servant when she went to the temple what she sees there are all the naked people there is no one who was wearing the robe so she thought okay i must have been mistaken i must have went to the people the nigantanath you know the nigantas there are the one ascetics in india who does not wear a single cloth even now also you will find that those people you know no clothes nothing for them so she must have thought that she immediately rushed back and she said oh oh my lady there is no monks there are only only naked uh, ascetics are there this vishaka was very wise person what she said okay now just before couple of minute there was a rain and this monk must have take the shower so she said okay go again and you will find the monks so this servant went back and what she she is now that because already rain has finished this monks they came they took their robes and they were and they were practicing meditation some were sitting there so the entire village was uh, this entire uh, monastery was filled with the monks so she went and invited this monk but they it is time for lunch please come to our home so this all the because of the supreme buddha visited her house and after the lunch after the food this vishaka sat down in one place and she worship supreme buddha and said bante i would like to ask the permission from supreme buddha to give monks a robe which they can wear when they are having bath or taking shower or if the rain time is there they can wear it extra robe because most of time they be in the bus because are traveling what happened one of the robe is get wet and they have to stay there you know so they have nothing to wear or for shower also so after that supreme buddha approved her okay you may offer the rain she said bante nakedness is not good it's not good looking means when the people sees they feel they feel shy you know they feel awkward and the monk staying like that it's not good so supreme buddha approved that thing and from that moment this was sana satika that monks has to wear this particular robe rainy retreat robe for maximum four months four months they can wear this robe for the shower so that was the rule the supreme buddha made see so what happened when the monk is staying in one place this devotee is like you will go a couple of days later to the temple and you will also offer this robe to the monks that bante take this rainy retreat robe vasana robe and please make this temple make this monastery your dwelling place for next 3 months that was the that, 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 that is the invitation you will offer to the bantes supreme buddha explain when the devotees invite bhikkhus to spend the 3 month of time in their temple or in the close to their house it becomes the beneficial for many people who are devotees of supreme buddha who are not it is become the place they can come and collect the merit it is becomes the place and where the bhakti are seen so that is the first benefit you are having when the bhikkhus are staying by offering them this robe 
for vasana second one second one the second benefit is that when the bhikkhus accept your invitation so you will have chance to offer them food you will have chance to offer them medicine you will have chance to offer them robe you will have chance to worship them these chances will open for you in pasana kal because this three months because don't travel and, and unless there is a invitation from someone and maximum seven days of period they can travel so this three month you will have that benefit what happened to the bhikkhus so monk who's practicing there like you know couple of days before there was a one gathering in our monastery every every six month we have a gathering for all the monks from the, all the manor monasteries gathered together and they took the advice they took the uh, blessings for our teacher and they travel for the different different monasteries means in a toronto monasteries you can see the couple of changes you know some new monks are there to spend this time you yeah? know so that is also the advice and with that uh, our teacher also expressed like we call the kammathana so kind of that okay practice this particular dhamma in this time of period that advice so monks what they do they also practice this one particular dhamma there are a couple of different different stories you will hear from the dhamma like one is that these three monks they spend a uh, rainy retreat uh, in the different forest uh, not three 30 months or something they spend the time in the forest and when they come back when the rainy retreat was finished they felt that we have attained enlightenment because there is no raga there is no dosha there is no moha so we have we must have attained enlightenment so they thought let's visit the supreme buddha and express our enlightenment to him so this 30 monk what they did they traveled to the supreme buddha where he was dwelling and when they were entering to the temple when they entering to the monastery supreme buddha asked ananda ananda go and the 30 monks who were coming to here to meet me tell them go and visit the cemetery and then come back because nothing is hidden from supreme buddha they were coming to supreme buddha to express their enlightenment but buddha knows that they are not enlightened yet but they they can become enlightened so he used it what he did he asked them to go to the cemetery so this 30 monk respecting the supreme buddha they visited cemetery it is not like today you know today you will find you when you go to the cemetery you will feel, you will see the beautiful flowers beautiful tombs there are angels you know the statues and everything is beautiful but in buddha's time cemetery was completely different we call the wet cemetery it means when someone dies we just take their body and throw outside that's all we place in one open space so what happened with the time the bird comes, the animal comes, and they tear apart all the body parts, and then it is visible for the people to see. It is not practicing today, but a couple of years back, it was there. So, even though that place is only for cemetery, so the, all the store, all the, uh, the skeleton is there, the bones are there, some are shatters, and there's so much smell, the dirtiness is there. So, this when this 30 monk went there, what they did they saw the faces they saw the bodies some of the females some male bodies and the raga the desire for the bodies arise in them for some monks not all some of them they started to see the parts of the bodies and they feel the desire some when they saw this the, all the, uh, the the bad things the smell the odor and the vision of that they started to develop the anger the hatred toward it oh so that happened some was 
completely diluted what is happening to them. They were unable to see the process. So these three kinds of uh, uh, chants were arise in there. The defilements arise in them. And then the Supreme Buddha expressed, because if the Raga is there, the Dvesha is there, the Moha is there, you are not enlightening. See the true nature of the body. See that this, the body is how the nature, it is decaying, tearing apart from the animals. And slowly, slowly it is vanishing completely, remains bones, and that bones also became completely finished. See the truth in that and practice the Dhamma. So immediately Bhante started to teach and they attained an enlightenment. They were free from defilement. When that happened, when the rainy retreat is finished, that. So in the rainy retreat times, monks has a time to practice the particular Dhamma. Same thing happened. Supreme Buddha one day, Supreme Buddha mentioned the one, uh, make the one precept. And the one bhikkhu was saying that this is this precept is very hard for me. I have eaten for the whole my life. Every time, you know, the earlier time there was no precept for eating uh, food at improper time. So there was no precept like that. So the monks were taking the uh, arms around for morning and evening also. So when the Bhante uh, Supreme Buddha mentioned the precept, one bhikkhu wasn't happy for it. He said, I don't want to follow that precept. I, do, I like to eat at night also. Because people, especially at night, they cook something good. You know, something delicious. It is only night time. So we will lose that chance to eat. So he said, I don't want to. And because of that, what he did? He did not visit the Supreme Buddha in the first month of rainy retreat. In the second month of rainy retreat, third month of rainy retreat. And when the time finished, all the monks gather him, gathered toward him, and they said, Go and visit the Supreme Buddha, ask forgiveness, learn from him. Okay, and then you will have understanding. So when he saw that, okay, one month has passed, second, and I haven't understand anything. So he was a little bit frightened and he immediately ran to the Buddha. Worship him and Supreme Buddha asked, Moga Purusha, the foolish person, what you were thinking? I made this precept for benefit of all of us, and you were tempted for food. It is not good for the bhikkhu who has renounced his name and home title to become ascetic life. It is, doesn't suit him. But he asked him a couple of questions because. Denying my words, have you attained it, any fruit of enlightenment? Did you attain the jhanas? He said, no. Did you attain it, the first fruit of enlightenment, like sotapana, sakatagami, anagami, arhanthut? He said, no. Have you attained it, the jhanas for the upper realm? He said, no. Then, why you were following the path which is not leading to attaining enlightenment? And he was really, really felt guilty. He asked forgiveness from Supreme Buddha. So see, in the rainy retreat time, the monks had a chance to practice the Dhamma. So the same thing goes for all the devotees also. What happened? When the bhikkhu is staying, you can go to him. You can talk with him that, Bhante, what should I do for this rainy retreat? So, you can do like this. What you can do? Like you're observing the eight precepts for once in a month or twice. You can observe in this rain retreat more often. And you can choose one particular Dhamma to refuge for this three month of time period. I'm going to practice the loving kindness meditation for three months continuously without any obstacles. I will practice this until I realize the first jhana or second. Making that determination, you can build that time. And for that, you can ask Bhikkhu to help you. Bhante, 
how to progress in this one. You can observe that I am going to practice the impurity meditation. You know, 32 impure parts in your body, Asubha Bhavana. And that you can practice for three months only that. So until the jhanas is attained it or the fruits of enlightenment are attained it, something like that. So when you make that determination, the bhikkhu is in your temple to assist you, to guide you to practice. That is the one thing. That is the one of aspect you can have from the rainy retreat. Next one, in whole, all over the world, this rainy season may be the different but observer of Vasana is same for all the countries. All the countries. Like this full moon day, 12th, from the 12th, 13th of the day, there the monks will observe the Vasana and the three months they will there. So in Thailand, there is a different rainy time, but they will also observe the Vasana Kala the next month, uh, this month of 12th. In Canada or in the Africa, in the different region of this world, wherever the bhikkhus are, rain time, the rainy season may be different, but Buddha's word was to stay these three months there. So they will observe the rain retreat in that time. So you will have chance to see all over the world, monks was going to spend the three months in one place. And what they will do? they will practice the meditation or the Dhamma in more powerful way. So in that time of period, if you take the effort to practice meditation, what will happen? The positiveness of this entire world will be with you. you know? That is really, really beautiful. Like when we gather together, when we practice meditation, so the negativity is very less. The same time when the monks practice the meditation and all over the world at once, then the, the, the rays of negativity will be decreased and the positivity will be increased in this air. So it will be good for us who's practicing Dhamma. That is a one of the benefits you can have from the Rainbow Tree. Next one is that you can offer the food time to time we can go to the monastery if you haven't done that don't take the invitation from the bhikkhus just prepare something by yourself and go to the temple before 10:30 uh, before the 10:30 visit the monastery and offer the food one day i was very happy or i wanted to offer something you don't have to cook for all the monks just how much you can cook for one person, two person, because there is always dana is already mentioned. If you can give them a call before you bring food, that will be marvelous. But if not, even though you can just go and offer in rainy retreat, it is really, really beneficial if you offer the food to the bhikkhus. Then you can offer the gilana pachay also. Gilana pachay, it means the drinks, you know, the, uh, the fruit juice, or the soft drinks, or any energy drinks, you can go and offer to the bhikkhus, Bhante, this is a refreshment I'm offering to well-being of Bhante, please. So, when you offer this food or the beverages or soft uh, refreshments to the bhikkhus, the, all over the world, who are the practicing Dhamma, those all bhikkhus become a part of it because you offer to the Sangha. So, that merit is multiplied by this all the number of people, you know, and that brings the more merit, merits to you. So you can do that too. Then you can study the sum of the suttas properly. Like the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, you can go through it again and again. Then you can practice the couple, couple of different practices like the Tayodhamma Sutta, so three dhammas I will develop in my life in this time. You can think in that way and you can practice one by one. And Bhikkhu is there so you can take the advice for him all the time. That is the benefit you will have from the Rinji tree. Then 
when the time is finished, when the one vasana is finished, you can go and offer the, you can participate in the cutting rope ceremony. It is very rare occasion. You know, you can participate in that too. Best, especially, you will have a chance to observe eight precepts more often. You don't have to wait for full moon days. Observe for every day or observe for every other day or the every uh, two days later, four days later or every week, you can observe the, uh, this eight precepts. How the enlightened monks have spent their time, I also like to follow them by practicing this thing, you know. So imitating great arhans, I am going to observe this sila. So you will have the glimpse of enlightened monk's life. See? That is the benefit you can have from rain retreat. So this marvelous time is, is already here. It is marvelous time to practice the Dhamma. And you can have this time to spend it. There are because there are monks and you can take advantage of them. So what you are going to do in rain retreat? you are going to offer the cloth of Vassan, Satika to the bhikkhus. You are going to invite them to Bhante, please spend these three months in our temple. What you are going to do, you are taking the responsibility for their food. You are taking the responsibility for their beverages. You are taking a responsibility for their medicine. And that way you collect the merits. Then you can ask them a particular Dhamma to practice in this three month of time period. Then what you're going to do, you are going to observe the eight precepts more often, more than usual. You're going to observe and trying to practice how the enlightened monk was dwelling. Next thing you're going to do, you're going to practice the one particular Dhamma for three months of time period. So you may see the Dhamma in the close as well. The closely you can see that. See, those are benefits. And last, you are going to participate in the cutting rope ceremony when the three months has passed. So you can go after that and express your progress to the bhikkhus, Bhante. In last three months, I was practicing this particular meditation and this kind of fruits I had get so i have collected so you can share that merit share that merits with the bhikkhus also one day three months i was practicing dhamma and i am going to share this merit with the bhikkhus that is also a benefit you can have it from there see isn't this marvelous time to practice dhamma rain retreat is really really beneficial for monks and as well as for the lay devotees too maybe the time period is different than Supreme Buddha's, but still the practice of the path is similar here. So you can take the advantage of that by associating because really, really with the close thing, closely. So I like to share the, all the merits of this Dhamma talk. So you may gain the benefit of this rainy retreat by having the Kalyana Mitta, the noble friend in your life. May you gain the, all the uh, uh, practices of Dhamma and fulfill your enlightenment. May this sutta be helpful for you to realize the four noble truths in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.